Hello health champions, today I want to go over a keto grocery list for beginners. Coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Eckberg. I'm a holistic doctor and a former Olympic decathlete. And if you want to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Whether you're just starting out on a low carb keto diet or whether you've done it for quite some time, there's always things to learn. So I've tried to compile some basics that you can benefit from when you're thinking about what to stock your cabinets with. So first of all, let's talk about what you don't want to do. You don't want to go and spend hundreds of dollars on things you have no idea how to use. So even if you have the best of intentions, don't go buy a bunch of vegetables you've never used, you don't know how to cook them, because they're probably just going to sit there and they're going to spoil. Instead, you start off, you, you empty your pantry, you throw out the stuff that you know you're not going to eat anymore, the sugar and the starches and the processed food. And then you buy some staples that you're familiar with. You buy some things that are not going to perish right away. You have used them in the past and those are going to be your foundation. So let's talk about those. I think it's a great idea to start with frozen things because even though that may not be the bulk or everything that you're going to eat, it's just great to have it at home. You can use it sooner or later and it's not going to go bad. So depending on the size of your freezer, you can buy various amounts and, and fill it up with good stuff. So meat, you can buy ground beef, you can buy fajita meat, whatever you're, you usually get. And the better the quality you can find and afford, the better. So I always recommend grass-fed organic, but if you can't find it or can't afford it, start somewhere, all right? That's the most important thing. Don't complicate it. Keep it simple. Then chicken, chicken wings, chicken thighs, I just love those things. Lamb is a great meat and fish also keeps very well in the freezer. And fish, in a lot of places you can buy the freshest fish frozen because they, they fish it, they harvest it and they freeze it already on the boat. They pull it straight out of the ocean and they freeze it. So some of the freshest fish you can buy is actually already frozen. Plus, it's convenient. And some of my favorites are salmon. And then you want to avoid some of the larger predatory fish. Salmon is one of the large fish that is actually pretty clean. It's low in mercury. But other than that, you primarily want to stick with small flat fish. So the, the white meat fish like flounder and cod and sole and so forth because they generally if they're small then they haven't lived long enough to get contaminated with a lot of mercury. And another one of my staples is sardines and I know a lot of you are just gonna wrinkle your nose and make an ugly face and frown at me but give it a try. A lot of people love tuna but, or canned tuna, but they just can't imagine eating these tiny little fish. Well, I challenge you to buy a good sardine in oil. I found some great ones at Costco. They're sardines in olive oil and you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference between that sardine and tuna canned tuna, right? So buy some canned sardines and give it a try. They're cheap and they're a fantastic concentrated nutrient source for very, very little money. It's a great snack. And some other things you can buy frozen are vegetables, all right? The broccoli and cauliflower you can find in a lot of places. They do very well. And like at Costco now, you can even buy the frozen cauliflower rice, the rice cauliflower, and it's already mixed up with bell pepper and, and some onion and some good stuff. It's flavorful, you're just throwing it, throw it in the pan and, and you've got a dish there already. Some of the things I like to buy fresh are spinach and bell pepper. And 
in the first few days. I use it fresh for a couple of days and then before it goes bad, I freeze the rest. So the bell pepper, I chop it up in little cubes. I put it in little Ziploc bags and then I have a little portion pack ready to take out if I make an omelet. And same thing with spinach. You put it in little Ziploc bags, you squeeze all the air out so they don't take so much space. And then that's perfect just to throw in the pan when you're making an omelet. The things I like to keep around, the vegetables I like to keep in the house fresh are cabbage, avocado, tomato and lettuce. Because those are things that I use all the time. So pick a few things that you know you're going to use a lot and those are the ones you keep fresh. Cabbage is great because it keeps a couple of months. So even if you don't get right to it, it's going to stay good for a while. Plus it's pretty inexpensive. Avocados, if you've never had them and never used them regularly, they can be a little tricky because it's like how do you know if they're ripe and how long do they last and so forth. Well, I buy them when they're green and hard and then you put them on the counter and then you watch them closely. You put them somewhere, you walk by all the time and every time as you see them start turning from green to a brownish black, you very gently squeeze them. And with some practice you get really good and the moment that you can start sensing a little bit of softness in that avocado, now you put it in the fridge and it keeps for a couple of weeks. And then before I'm done with those avocados in the fridge, I'll buy some new ones and as soon as they start to soften, I put them in and I have in a drawer, I put the, the newer ones in the back so I kind of rotate and keep the stock moving forward. So I buy a dozen avocados at a time. We go through them. There's several a day in my household that we eat. Absolutely fabulous food. It's keto friendly. It is a a nutrient dense plant that just works as a wonderful complement to all the other stuff. Tomato, lettuce and, and cucumber also are some staples I use for salads all the time. So whatever you use a lot of and you know you're going to use fresh, you get some of that. And on the keto diet, you're going to eat very, very low carb. You're going to eat moderate protein and then you're going to fill up on fat as needed. So you need some quality fats. You want to be able to cook your vegetables in high quality fat. So the ones I always keep are butter, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, coconut cream and MCT oil. And you do want to spend just a little bit extra to get the organic whenever it comes to fat because most poison, most metals, chemicals, hormones, they're fat soluble. So when you buy an oil, you're buying a concentrated version of something and if it had toxins to start with, then it's going to have concentrated toxins. So as much as possible, you want to buy the organic to minimize that toxic exposure. Some people avoid dairy. Some people are sensitive to dairy and then you want to cut that out. But if you feel that you tolerate dairy well, then you go for the full fat and the fermented. Those are the best ones. So the ones that I keep around are sour cream and cheese. And I try to get the raw cheese whenever I can, but at least get a good quality cheese so it hasn't been processed and milk, uh, mixed in with pasteurized uh, milk and things like that. Some of the pre-made slices of cheese, for example, you want to avoid because they have milk, they have pasteurized low-fat milk mixed in with them. So then you're not really getting the cheese, you're getting pasteurized milk with it. Those are the ones that people tend to be the most sensitive to. And next, I think that you can go by the deli counter and get some ham and some sausage and some pepperoni. But it depends on where you live and what you have access to because this is a maybe category. It could be perfectly fine. If you find some organic, if you find some good sources, if they haven't added a bunch of sugar and preservative and nitrates, then, then they're fine. And these are great for snacks. Right? They're perfect. You, you're in between meals. You just want a little something, then grab a few slices of ham or a sausage. 
and these also keep in the freezer. Deli to me is totally fine as long as you're selective about what you get and fortunately there's more and more good alternatives coming out. I mean there's tons more stuff than even just two three years ago. Then you want to load up on some nuts and seeds. All right. If you have room in the freezer, you keep them in the freezer. If you don't, then they keep fine on the counter. But on the counter, they last for weeks or months. In the freezer, they last for years. So if you have room, you can put them in the freezer. And these are things that are not going to spoil. And as you start exploring different keto options, at some point, you're probably going to want to bake something. You might want to make some oatmeal substitutes. You want to make some, some cookies or some bread or some crackers. And these things are going to be your staples for those. They're also great for snacks. And if you use them for snacks, you want to try to get the nuts that are tasty when they're raw. So macadamia nuts, pecans, walnuts, almonds, for example, are great. And then for the seeds, I like the chia, the flax, the hemp, and the pumpkin seeds. And then I buy almond flour because that's great for baking and filling and mixing. If you're making smoothies, then these nuts also come, nuts and seeds also come in handy. Another great staple, unless you just happen to be sensitive to them, are eggs. And any old egg will work, but as you get into a healthier lifestyle, you want to look for pasture-raised eggs eggs. Not pasteurized, but pasture-raised. That means the chicken had a normal chicken life and they ran around, they had grass and blue skies and they could eat a variety of things in their environment. That's pasture-raised. And as you get used to that, you will appreciate the quality of those eggs. The yolk is large and orange and beautiful and tasty. You also want to keep some condiments around. I like to have hot sauce. We have a recipe for hot sauce and I like to keep mustard and mayonnaise. The only thing about the mayo is as you get into the keto lifestyle and you start appreciating the quality of fat, you realize that the fats I listed here are inflammation neutral whereas most mayo on the market is made with pro-inflammatory soybean oil and canola oil. So you want to look for some mayo that is made with something like avocado oil or you make it yourself. You can stock up on a good variety of coffee and tea. Okay, coffee speaks for itself. The tea can be black, green, white or any herb tea. Just watch on the herb teas. The vast majority of them are great but there are some that have added sugar or some chemicals or some weird stuff in them. So go with reputable brands and, and figure, try to figure out what's, what's in there so you're getting good things. And like I mentioned, you're probably going to want to get into baking something at some point. I've discovered some great keto breads. I'm doing some cookies for treats. And for these, you want the same nuts that we listed above, but you could also have nut butters like peanut butter, cashew butter, almond butter. Go easy on the cashew because it's kind of high in carbs. And you can have seeds, the same ones we, we listed, the chia, flax, hemp, and pumpkin, but also shredded coconut. In a lot of health food stores and farmer's markets, you can find unsweetened, finely shredded coconut. And that's the one you're looking for, not the regular shredded coconut because that's like 50% added sugar. I keep almond flour around. I grind my own pecan flour and walnut flour for, for baking. And also you want to keep cocoa powder because you can make hot chocolate from coconut cream. You can make smoothies with it. You can make some cookies and treats with it, some keto bombs. And baker's chocolate, really dark chocolate. You can keep around some eating chocolate as well. So as long as it's in the 80% range, 80% cocoa or above the dark chocolate, then it's going to have very, very little sugar in it. So you can enjoy an occasional treat. But if you go down to like 50%, cocoa in the chocolate. Now it's going to have too much sugar. 
So you're going to eat a lot of sugar, but it's also going to stimulate cravings, so you're not going to be able to stop as easily. But once it's 80% or above, a single piece is often very satisfying. You want to try to do away with just about every sweetener that you've ever used, such as sugar or honey or agave or maple syrup, etc. But there are some sweeteners that I think can be useful and acceptable. You want to give up soda for sure, except something called Zevia. And that's a soda with a variety of flavors. I don't get paid for this. And they sweeten it only with stevia and they have nothing artificial, no artificial colors. Even the cola and the orange soda is perfectly clear like water. So it's a good product. Don't overdo it, but it's a nice treat once in a while. You can get some stevia and monk fruit, but you want to get it in the concentrated powder form or you want to get it in a concentrated liquid form. Try to avoid the ones that have a lot of fillers and that have a lot of sugar or maltodextrin and things like that in them. It's not terrible to get those little packets, but if you use them on a regular basis, even that little half gram of sugar can add up and it's just unnecessary. Some people like to drink coffee or tea and they can't drink it just straight so then they add a little bit of stevia and monk fruit and I don't personally like stevia in coffee. I just don't like that flavor. However, I love stevia in smoothies and on yogurt and things that are kind of tart or sour. The stevia works wonders. So basically everything on this list is going to have less than four or five grams of carbs per hundred, net carbs per hundred grams of food. So less than four or five percent of this food is going to be carbs. And that means it's very keto friendly. As long as you stick to these things, it's going to be very difficult to exceed your carbohydrate allowance. Keep it simple. Stick to the things you're somewhat familiar with in the beginning and then you slowly branch out and you develop new skills and you find and develop new recipes, a new repertoire for things, all right? But don't try to go crazy in the beginning because then things get too complicated and you want to be nice to yourself and not complicate things. And super important is that you have some snacks available so that you don't fall for the temptation, it, whether you're home or whether you're out somewhere. You want to have something that if you get a craving or a desire that you can grab something real quick. And some of the best things then would be, for me, I know this sounds strange, but sardines are great. You could have something like avocado. Those are things you can eat like the right the way they are. Uh, but also ham, sausage, pepperoni, cheese. Those are great snacks. Nuts are great snacks. Keep something handy. Keep something in your purse, in your pocket so that you don't run out and are tempted to eat the wrong thing. And then what I recommend over time is that you learn to cook large batches of things. So when you make a stew or when you bake something or whatever you make, then you make a big batch that does well with freezing and then you can cook on weekends and you can cook enough of something for a month or two. And then you start kind of increasing your repertoire. You fill up your freezer with ready-made things that you can just pull out and, and defrost and make life much easier. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out that one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.